Chapter 13 The Medium's Confession The man is dead, shrieked one of the hysterical women. Oh, Sandra has been killed by a spirit. Recovering from her first shock at the sight of the inert figure, Penny moved quickly to the medium's side. She touched his hand. Relief surged over her, for it was warm. Oh, Sandra has merely fainted, she cried. Give me a knife. Someone? So I can cut his cords. One of the men handed her his pocket knife. She slashed the throngs which bound Osandra's hands and feet. The medium stirred. That voice, he muttered, and a shudder went over his voice. He's coming around now, said Penny. Will you see if you can find some water, Mrs. Weems? And what has become of that man called Spider? Even as she spoke, the room was flooded with electric light. The hunchback padded into the room. Penny gazed at him sharply, wondering where he had been when his presence was so sorely needed. Your master is fainted, she said. Can you get us some water? The hunchback stared at the slumped figure on the table and then, without a word, retreated. He came back a moment later with a glass of water. Penny pressed it to Osandra's lips. The dwarf remained close by, watching as his master took a few sips. Didn't you hear us call for the lights to be turned on, asked Penny. The hunchback stared at her in a stupid way and did not reply. However, when Mrs. Weems spoke of sending for a doctor, he said harshly, No, master wouldn't like that. By this time, only Mrs. Weems, Penny, and one other woman remained in the room. For the others, frightened half out of their wits by the terrifying events, had fled to the streets. Osander ran a hand across his eyes, as if trying to brush away the vision which haunted him. His gaze rested fixedly upon the dwarf. Spider, he said in a half whisper. That voice, did you hear it? Yes, master. Then it was not you who cried out my name. Oh, no, Master, I heard the voice say that your hour would come. I was frightened. I ran away and hid. What was the significance of those words, inquired Penny. A convulsive shudder racked Melvin Ostrandra's body. I don't know, he answered. In all my years as a medium, nothing like it ever happened before. The voice may have come from the beyond. But why should that prove so terrifying, asked Penny. Aren't you accustomed to conversing daily with spirits? Not with spirits who shout threats, Osander said sullenly. In other words, until today, you have practiced a bit of trickery, Penny suggested. When a voice really spoke, you were shocked because you weren't expecting it. Osander's silence was a confession of guilt. Mrs. Weems stared at him indignantly. Well, of all things, she exclaimed, to think that I'd been taken in by a cheap faker. Here you've been accepting hard-earned money from honest people and pretending that you were in contact with the spirits. I'm not a cheap fake, Osandra denied angrily. If you spread that story around the neighborhood, I'll be ruined. No one will visit my establishment again. And it would serve you right, Mrs. Weems declared. I'm sure you'll get no more money from me. Osandra buried his head in his hands, looking so sick and miserable that Penny began to feel sorry for him. Don't expose me, he pleaded. This is the only way I have of earning my living. I only resort to tricks such as all medium Jews. Tell us what they are, and we may be lenient, Penny urged. My assistant spider helps me. I move the table and tap on it by means of mechanical device in the cabinet back of my chair. I try to learn facts about my clients and tell them what they wish to hear. That's all. And the mysterious voice? I tell you, I can't explain it, Osander insisted. It was like a warning from the dead. Do you believe in the supernatural, Mr. Osandra? Penny questioned. No, not at least... I never did until today, but that voice was a great shock to me. It sounded for all the world like... Like what? Penny prompted as the man hesitated. Osander shook his head. He realized 
that he had revealed far too much. Suddenly, he gazed at Penny with suspicion. Aren't you that same girl who came here the other day, he demanded. The reporter? Penny isn't a reporter, declared Mrs. Weems. Osandra sank back in the chair, closing his eyes. He looked pale and tired. I'd have sworn, but then I'm not myself today. I'm going to my room and rest. I beg you, don't repeat what I told you or I shall be ruined. We might keep your secret upon one condition, Penny bargained. What is it? Do you recall a man by the names of Slosser who comes here? Yes. He's a poor man and can't afford to waste his money. Do not allow him to come here again. I'll do as you ask, Osandra promised. And now please leave me alone. My nerves are shattered. As Penny and Mrs. Weems went down the long stairway to the street, the housekeeper declared again that she did not understand how she could have been taken in by a person of Osandra's character. I hope you'll say nothing of it to your father, she said uneasily. Not that I wish to keep secrets from him, but I have acted so foolishly. Oh, I don't wonder you were taken in by the man, Penny answered. For just a moment, when those lights went out, I was under his spell myself. Didn't that old hunchback give you the shivers? I scarcely noticed him. You didn't. It seemed to me that his eyes followed me everywhere I went. I couldn't help wondering whether he had something to do with that mysterious voice. Why would he call out threats to his own employer? Mrs. Weems asked in bewilderment. Such a thing isn't likely, Penny. Besides, it was not his voice. No, that's true. Upon second thought, I guess Spider couldn't have had anything to do with it. Just the same, it was weird. And poor Osandra was frightened out of his wits. So was I. I declare, this has taught me a severe lesson. Penny and the housekeeper had reached the further stairways. Rounding the corner to the hall, they came face to face with a young woman who had just entered the building. She wore a dark veil over her hat, but at such close range, her features were plainly visible. Penny stopped short. The new arrival was Helene Harmon. Why, Miss Harmon, she exclaimed in astonishment. I certainly didn't expect to meet you here. Do, 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 do.